I know it's pretty dark. Uh, I'm sitting in a parking lot. Um, I, I want to make a a video about you know being in a relationship um, and having anxiety and stuff like that. You know, um, I'll be honest. Lately, I've been feeling a little bit depressed. Um, I know I don't my reason, but you know, some I do have a baby. Uh, I have another daughter um she's about a little bit over two and a half months almost three months in a, in about three weeks or so and um you know my oldest is 21 uh, i had my oldest when when i was 21 so for me i'm like oh my god i have another i have another one they, they have sisters um same dad different mom but you know um my ex from my from my oldest you know left me a couple of years ago um we didn't talk for a while but we're talking now but we're not no feelings nothing you know but and then i look back you know i'm like oh my god um those years that i bothered were really bad and anxiety depression panic attacks staying home um i feel like um like I was a bad dad you know my daughter was um going to high school at the time when I started having panic attacks and then you know I look at it I'm like oh my god um no wonder my ex left me because I couldn't be I couldn't be there as a dad I couldn't be there as a as a boyfriend, because we were not married, I couldn't be there as a family. I couldn't be there for my own family. I couldn't be there as a, as a brother, as an uncle, as a son. You know, um, and then lately I've been thinking the same way. So in my mind, now in my mind, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> I, my anxiety has been pretty high again. Uh, my, you know, my parents are getting old. My parents are like going in and out of the ER and that's making me, that's increasing my anxiety as well. I'm not going to lie. Um, and then I worry about, you know, a lot of stuff. But, you know, my daughter, my oldest is in college now. She's been in college for a couple of years. Um, and, you know, I worry about, because I still worry about her even though she's old and she tell me, don't worry about me. Um, you know, but I still do, you know, because <clears throat> because you know she's um she was there when I first had my first two panic attacks. Um, you know, like I mentioned, my first two panic attacks happened the same day. You know, um, within half an hour, forty five minutes apart. You know. <laughs> And you know, for me, just remembering all those times that I went out with my daughter, her mom, okay, you know, and then slowly when I start having parent time, I was stuck at home. I see them going places, and then I'm like, oh my god, why? When can I go to places again? And you know, in deep inside, I was like, you know, I'm going to be stuck at home for a while, and then, you know, what if? I might find someone else that's like, oh, oh, this. And then, you know, she feels loved by another guy. And then, you know, surely enough, that's what happened. And then, you know, slowly, you know, she stopped sleeping with me. And then when she does, it's just to sleep. And then, you know, when someone calls her phone, her text her, she gets up and go to the living room and talk. And then she slowly goes to the living room to sleep, okay? And... You know, now I think about it, I'm like, oh my God, if I start having panic attacks again, is this going to happen to me again? And then, you know, surely enough, I've been having a little bit of panic attacks here and there, but, you know, I just let it happen and go because I'm not trying to you know, be stuck at home again. Okay, now I've been in the same way. I'm like, oh my God, when someone texts my current girlfriend and she gets off her bed and you know, get off her bed on the phone oftenly when I'm calling her, it's like um, I get no response from her. 
you know um and then that same damn thing pops in my head like oh maybe she's gonna leave me one time too and then you know and my mind is like ah oh, you know like this and i and then i started to think like oh my god is should I even be in a relationship, um, you know, show people because they, oh, <laughs> not every female is like a bad car, but, you know, but sometimes it just feels like that, you know, even though it doesn't happen again, but it's that feeling that's stuck in my head that is the worst feeling ever, um, you know, but I even told my, um, I, I told my my oldest daughter I say, you know, if if this happens to me again, me again, don't feel sad for me. Um, you know, because if I'm not meant to have a girlfriend, I'm not meant to have a girlfriend. You know, uh, maybe I'm meant to be single for the rest of my life till I'm till I'm buried, till I'm like pass away. You know, as long as you know I. As long as I live, as long as I can, that's all that. Maybe that's all that really matters. Um, as long as my kids are healthy, my family's healthy. You know, maybe that's all that should matter. Um, you know, and like you know, if someone has to cheat because I'm going through something, maybe that's the way it's supposed to be for me. You know, you know. Um, people tell me everyone has a hard life. But not everyone has lived in my shoes, and believe me, um, since I was 12 years old, I already been through so much that, you know, people that were 12 years old wouldn't even believe. When I was 12 years old, I already cut school. I, by now, had learned disability. I wanted to be a doctor before, um, then I start thinking, oh my God, if I have a learning disability, how am I going to be a doctor? Who's going to want me as a doctor? With uh, who's who's going to be, who's going to trust a person that has a learning disability to be their doctor? And then you know, I was like, just like that. Um, but you no, know, and then I was good in sports. You know, I could have been a, I could have played basketball. I was good playing football uh, when I was young. I was always catching, like, and playing catch. And, you know, for PE, my, when I was in school, when I was actually in school, my PE teacher said, if I can keep a good grade, at least a 2.0, I could have been in the middle school playing basketball. But, you know, I messed that up. And, you know, I kept thinking back, oh my God, what if I stay in school and I was able to get, Say high school basketball and college, and who knows? How um, maybe I could have been in the pros. Never know, but you know. Sometimes I look back at all the times I messed up, and I say now it's slowly catching up to me. So you know, I people ask why don't I drink? Why don't I smoke? Because just because I'm Asian, people expect me to smoke, but they don't know. Just because, because. Deep inside, I messed up in my past, and I don't want to go around smoking and drinking to do something else stupid. I'm not saying everyone that drinks and smoke is doing something stupid. I already had enough of messing around when I was younger. Now that I'm older, I'm trying to do right for all the mistakes I made in my own past. You know, um, I have friends that caused trouble when they were my age and now I don't know where they're at. Some of them went to jail, some of them are who knows where. Like, you know, my best friends from when I was younger. <clears throat> you know, we were all one big happy family, like a uh, close friends, so right? about thirty of us and they all went separate ways. They start as they got older they started, you know, fighting against each other and then, you know, I left I moved out from that city and I moved to well, almost an hour away. And when I go back to the city, I visit my old elementary school, my old middle school. <laughs> and then I look, you know, my old neighborhood, I, I just close my eyes. I can just see my old self, you know, the, those moments of me growing up, 
like a learning pain, you know. Um, just, just thinking, you know. And I remember time to time I used to see my grandma um, taking the bus, the light well <clears throat> to Chinatown. You ever been to San Francisco? You know Chinatown. There's a lot of hills, and there goes my grandma just pushing her, um, pushing the cart. <laughs> I walk her up and down the hill and then I just look at myself and say, oh my God, <laughs> my grandma walking around and then I would get upset. I'm like, why isn't my aunt, my youngest aunt taking her places? I was um, in my early teens at the time. I said, you know, I said, I hope my grandma don't catch me. But at the same time, I feel guilty for not being able to help my grandma like uh, you know going up and down the hill with a bad back and you know pushing a cart with with food and stuff and you know um, even now when I see like an elderly person I push in a cart and sometimes I picture or just see my grandma going up and down the hill and you know um, it makes me feel sad um for because you know there's times that i i ask my aunt and uncle say you're home why can't you just drive grandma places you know and they'll say oh we have to go work or we're tired i say and then i start getting and then i have something else to say and then i'll say well you're tired but don't you see her at her age going up and down the hill how how hard is it to drive, you know? And then I said, if I can drive, I would have drove her right now. And, you know, and things like that makes me, I don't know, it just makes me mad. Um, you know, I'm more upset about myself than anything. When I mess up, I am, on one little thing, I am mad at myself. And it takes me time to forgive myself, you know, when and the other thing that upsets me is when someone gets, when someone um, makes a mistake and they say, oh, everyone makes a mistake. But when I make a mistake, it's like I made a big mistake, even though if it's the same mistake. That's one thing I, I hate the most is when someone says, oh, you made a mistake. But when I tell that person, you know, oh, you made a mistake, and then they just laugh it off, say, oh, everyone makes a mistake, you know. I, in my head, sometimes I start wondering, like, am I meant to be around people? Or people just wants to point out my mistakes. That's why when I had a learning disability, I just didn't want to go to school because I didn't want to deal with anyone pointing fingers at me. You know, I didn't want other my classmates to say, oh, he's he's stupid, uh, he's slow, he's, you know, we don't. We, we learn it faster. We don't want someone to slow us down. And then my mom's like, you know what? I'll do everyone a favor. I'm not going to school anymore. I find my, when I stop going to school, I find my way out of school. You know, I, I would climb the fence. I would dig a hole under whatever way I can get myself out of school. I work. I learned the transit system in San Francisco what time the bus goes here, what, which bus I can take to go here, how to avoid, you know, um, the school security guards, what time they do the rotation, every little thing that I can do. When they call my house, this is back in the 90s, right? When you barely have, when you just had dial-up internet, you know? If someone calls, when you have dial-up internet, you know, you lose connection. So we pay for an extra phone line. So I went to the office and I, I told my, the school like, oh, we changed our phone number. So they used the phone number that, you know, the internet goes to. So if they call, I would be the one that picks up and and if they say, oh, your, your son or your daughter with this name has, hasn't been to school, I just pick up and say, okay, and that's it. And I just make sure I read the whole message before I hang up so they don't call back, you know, so I did every little thing possible to get my way out of trouble, like, you know, 
not trouble. I was already causing trouble, but I mean, like, I would do anything to get myself out of um, getting caught. And I had never got caught, like, you know, cut in school. But one day I just told my parents, like, you know, I straight up told my parents that, you know, I can't, I'm not doing a good in school. And I'll be honest that, you know, that guilt, every time I cut school, every, those years I cut school, I hear my cousins and my and his sister like showing the report cards like oh we're getting like C's and B's and A's where I'm over there getting R F's and then I'm like and then you know I hear their parents like oh so proud of them getting like good good grades and then here I am going home with like oh I don't have my report card. I thought they sent it to house, etc etc. And then I told my parents why not like I stopped I got tired of hiding it, I told them, and then of course my parents got upset. I also got upset because, uh, myself because, um, you know, for them the disability get to me and, you know, just looking back, you know, sometimes I can't sleep. I, I see, I have this picture of, of myself from high school. <laughs> Freshman, I was only in high school for like a, maybe a month or two, and every time I wake up, I see that picture. It's it's like you know, I I put my hand in a fist and just get upset. Like I really messed up, <laughs> um, and you know those memories. You know, I wish I can just shove those memories in the back of my head and just delete them. But, you know, that's easier said than done. You know, um, for every mistake I make, you know, it takes me time to just forget it. Sometimes they, they just pop, they just pop back in, in my head and then I just get, just get upset at myself again. And, you know, that's why I say sometimes who knows, maybe I was never meant to be in a relationship, you know. Um, um, I even told my girlfriend, you know, I I don't date people I work with. I don't like it when people try to set me up with other people, uh, you know, and but I took a chance and I dated her and, you know, sometimes I went there if if I made a mistake by you know just going against my own my own saying like don't date someone you work with and then now I've done it now in my mind I'm like wondering that she regrets saying yes to me because you know I'll be honest I haven't been I haven't been a a good dad to the baby you know because when now my mind is all over the place you know when you have depression you know um it's the worst feeling, you know, when you have Pantax. <laughs> sometimes people say, you know, going through pregnancy is the hardest thing. I know a friend that has went to two pregnancy and she will tell you, you no, know, pregnancy is easy. Having panic attacks, depression, PTSD is way worse than pre than being a than being in um pregnant because guess what? You're pregnant for nine months, then you have your baby, right? And then once your baby gets your baby, you can have someone else help you take care of it. But guess what? When you have panic attacks, depression, you don't have it for nine months. You can't hand it your depression to someone else. Say, oh, here you go. Um, here's three hundred dollars. Uh, I'll pay you three hundred dollars a week to take care of my depression. No. It doesn't work that way, you know. Because if it does, trust me, I would be like, here, somebody take my depression. Someone, here, you take my depression. You take my anxiety. You take my panic attack. You take my PTSD. You take my learning disability, you know. Um, it doesn't work that way, you know, no matter what, you know. For me, I don't know what cancer is like. I don't have it. Someone that uh, has cancer doesn't know what having panic attack feels like. Someone that has, someone that, it's like, for people that tell me, just go to sleep. Guess what? Going to sleep doesn't help 
with your depression. It doesn't help your panic attacks, etc. Because if it helps you, how come there's times that I can sleep for eight hours, 10 hours, I wake up with more panic attacks. You tell me why. Because it's like people think depression is laziness. No. People that are lazy, they might not even have panic attack. They're just straight up lazy. People with depression, they're not lazy. They just don't feel like they can make anyone happy. That's what I feel like right now. Like, I can't make this person happy. I can't make that person happy. I can't even make myself happy. Sometimes I make, I try to make someone else happy. But deep inside, I'm not even happy. You know, sometimes I have to fake my smile just to get through my day. Just And people don't see, when they look at me, they don't see the pain that I'm going through in my, inside my own mind. <laughs> when I see someone walking by me and I can sense that person might have depression, I would just turn back and tell them, hey, me too. And then, you know, but... People that don't have anxiety panic attack, they don't, when they walk by someone, <laughs> they just walk by, they don't know anything. For me, when I walk by someone, when I see someone's um, elderly parents walking by themselves on the walker, I and I'm walking, I always like, you know, I just look. Sometimes I walk behind them, I walk side by side to them, just so they don't feel by themselves. Like uh, a couple of days ago, I was walking my baby to the market and then I was walking and then I see someone's mom, someone's grandma on the walking the shopping cart with a little basket. And I'm like, okay, someone else was walking. So I just walk side by side. So it's looking like I'm walking with her, but you know, and then I, and then, you know, I turn back and then she just like, just stand there like tired. And then I just, you know, I'm having, a, I have a baby that might be screaming at any time, but you know, so I just keep walking, just keep looking back just to make sure she's okay. Because, you know, as a young, when I was young, I was always worrying about, you know, uh, my grandma. So sometimes when, I picture, like I mentioned, when I picture someone else's elderly parents, I instantly pops up in my mind. I see my grandma. You know, um, I don't remember my grandpa too much. <laughs> I remember my grandma a lot. Um, sometimes I hear my mom talking about my grandma, and then she, my mom will start thinking about her mom. And you know, my, and then I start worrying about my mom because my mom is getting old too. You know, so, and when I picture my, see my mom, I see my grandma because they look alike. Um, we used to own a little a business years ago and there was this lady that reminds me of my own grandma, the, the face, how she has a hunch in the back. She walks around collecting cans. So when I'm drinking water, soda, whatever, I will run to her and just, you know, say, oh, here's some, cans for you and then you know and that's it and you know she just looks at me just just like bow down and then I'm like oh my guy just reminds me of my grandma um, hmm. you know sometimes people look at me and they they look at me and my face say this guy doesn't look like he cares about anybody but you know sometimes people would think about me a certain way I try my best not to care but uh, you know those those people don't know the pain that goes to my own mind. You know, I'm 43 years old and, you know, I can picture myself back all those times I messed up, but no matter how many times I messed up, you know, um, my family, I will always be there. I, I always worry about my family and when something bothers me, I, I don't really tell people because I always get that feeling like, Someone will say, oh, who cares? I just go to sleep. Uh, you know, everyone has problems, you know, stuff like that. But anyways, that's, you know, that's how I feel like, you know, sometimes I feel like, do I deserve to be in a relationship? 
you know, some, and then, you know, sometimes I see a couple, you know, just happy, laughing, hugging, and then I'm like, and then I just take a, a brief, a quick um, breath and like, you know, like, maybe one day um, that can be my girlfriend and I again.